All right, so welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to UI or a user interface in Project Spark. And we're going to do that by displaying um, your coin counter in a nice, bit more nicer way than we currently have. Let's go into test. Right now, we're just saying coins collected um, colon zero, and then, you know, increases every time we hit one of these coins. So let's, let's, uh, let's change that. Also looks like our goblin here, we uh, messed him up his orientation most likely so we can go ahead and fix that so um, in between this and the last tutorial we uh, now have the goblin spawning at this logic cube let's just turn it around so that the goblin faces where this logic cube faces so user interface a creating a user interface is actually pretty simple now that you understand how with building this 2D game, we had to constrain this character to two different axes. The right here, it's the uh, Y axis and the Z axis. So similar to that with UI, UI is constrained to the X and Y axis because it's all on your screen. So your screen is a 2D plane. Your screen isn't this you know, 3D thing, even though it's displaying 3D images, it's still a flat screen. So let's go ahead and uh, start actually um, displaying stuff inside of our character and I am going to display all this on a new page so this is our first time going to a new page in a brain so let's uh, go ahead and hit right bumper to go to page 2 and I want to set up all of my UI on its own page it's great to try and compartmentalize things inside your character brains just to make it easier to navigate through all the different behaviors happening to them so first thing we want to do is we, we want to name the page so let's go ahead and go to Brain Options. Now we have this option to rename page. I'm going to rename this page at UI. Why do I put an at symbol there? Well, it, mostly it's just laziness. When you put an at symbol there, then this appears higher in kind of alphabetical order of all the different text strings that I can select. So when I need to select a text string referencing this page, it's much easier. I don't have to go all the way to U. I can go to the uh, symbols area. All right, so our page is now called UI. First thing we want to do is let's just, for now, let's just copy the UI we have on this first page. So this display coins collected, global coin counter screen top right, we can copy that, paste that on the second page, and then delete that from the first page. And then display health, we can copy that, put that on the second page, and delete that from the first page. So there are kind of two different ways that you can use page management and page switching inside of Brains. Let's uh, create a new line right here. Let's go over to the second page and go to this Brains section. And you're going to see two different options for pages. You can switch page or call a page. Switch page just switches this brain from running all the lines of code on one page to all the lines of code on whatever other page you want to run lines of code on. So we could say switch page and call the UI page and that would make it so that basically all the characters movement, the camera, none of that will work any longer. It'll just be running this UI that we're displaying on the second page. Instead we want to call page and call page basically takes all of this code from whatever page you want, here it's the second page, and brings it into the first page to call it. So we're going to do that by referencing the name of the page. So we're going to go to Values, Text, uh, then go to this text area, and then we can look for, we have at UI here. See, that's why I wanted to put an at symbol there, because now it appears right at the beginning of the uh, alphabet. So call page at UI. Now this is going to call these two lines, basically, to always continue to run on this first page, because there's nothing constraining the win side of things, so this is always going to run. Let's jump into test. And we see we're displaying our health meter and our coins collected, just like before. And when we uh, hit our coins collected, um, this is looking like it's, it's running properly. It looks like that goblin still is, is a problem, so maybe we need to push this back even more so, maybe right to here. Okay, so. It may seem weird, you know, you may think to yourself, well, why are we calling a page with all these lines of code? Why can't we just put these lines of code on this first page? And that's just simply management. It's much easier to 
switch between 10 different pages than to scroll down you know, 200 lines of code to find the code that you're working on. It's great whenever possible to compartmentalize kind of everything running in a character or in a more complex brain. So that's why it's much easier. Now when we go in this brain, we know we want to play around with the UI. Well, that's all on the UI page. We don't have to worry about scrolling down through the first page to find out where it is. Much easier to find the things faster for us. So I want to actually take this coin and let's go ahead and change this from just a default coin by using this method swap mesh. What that does is this is going to keep all the code I put into this coin to make it spin and move upwards, but I can change the actual object that all this code is on. So I'm going to type in a uh, Codian here because I love using the Codian runestone for my collectible. So I now am using Codian runestone. Looks like this is very small. Sometimes, you know, this happens depending on uh, what, what kind of mesh you bring in. You may need to just increase that. So let's go ahead and increase the scale of this Codian runestone up to, let's say, you know, 240. And now when I hit these blocks, instead of a coin appearing, this Codian runestone will appear. And I want to do that because I want to display it. It looks a bit nicer displaying that than a coin from my own preference. Let's jump inside the brain, go to the UI page, and now let's set a new type of variable. Let's go to once, and let's set a new type of variable here. Go to values, vector. So vector variables store three points. They can store the x access point, <clears throat> the y axis point, and the z axis point. With the UI screen, we only need to worry about x and y. So let's create a new variable called uh, display icon. And here's where we set the x and y position that uh, the icon of this Codian piece is going to show up on the screen. So what we can do is say display icon uh, x, and then we can have a second line with display icon um, go over to y. And these can both be equal to numbers. Now, what numbers would they be equal to? Well, with on-screen UI, we have it set up so that the entire screen space, you can see my kind of mouse hovering between all, this, all the areas of the screen space. This entire screen space goes between negative one to positive one on both the y-axis and the x-axis. So on the x-axis, negative one is over here on the far left hand of the side of the screen. Positive one is on the far right hand side of the screen. For y, positive one is at the top of the screen and negative one is at the bottom of the screen. So use that to um, decide kind of where you want items to go. So I want my icons to be up here near the top right, actually near where this Team Dakota Thing is so, so that would be roughly uh, 0 0.8 on the x-axis. So let's go ahead and type in 0 0.8 and about 0 0.9 on the y-axis. Now we want to have our number for coins as well. So let's do another vector variable and let's call it display coin counter and we're going to take the x and x for that will be slightly shifted more towards the right so here it's going to be 0 0.85 for this and display counter y so display counter go to vector components y equals also 0 0.9 because we want the number to appear kind of on the same Y plane as the icon. So hopefully this makes sense because these two things are going to be referenced for displaying the icon for the kind of collectibles we're collecting, as well as the number of collectibles we have collected. So now here's how we can reference that. I no longer need this coins collected text because uh, we're going to have the icon of the actual coin as an indicator for this is the thing that I'm collecting. But we're going to keep global coin counter because that's the number of coins I have. And instead of this being at screen top right, let's get rid of that. 
And let's uh, also get rid of extra large font for now. Let's go to modifiers, position, and then you're going to see at screen position. So choose at screen position. And then we can take this display coin counter vector variable, copy that, bring that down here. And now this is going to display global coin counter at this vector variable that we've set up here. Now I have this only once because you only need to set these coordinates at the very beginning of the game. They don't need to be constantly set every single frame of the entire game. Anything you can do to basically constrain down the amount of times code runs is better. So all this code only ever needs to really one run once. That's why it's under a once tile. Now let's also say um, display. Let's go to objects, gallery picker, and I still have Codian typed in here, so I can choose my Codian rune stone. And same uh, with what I did on the top line. I can go to position, at screen position, and let's copy over display icon. So let's go ahead and go into test and see what this looks like. So we have a huge Codian rune stone and very tiny number. Some people might like the look of that, but I, I don't quite. I want them to be the same size. So I want that number to be bigger. I want the rune stone to be smaller. We can go ahead and do that now. Let's go to edit. Let's go back into this character's brain and let's pick up right where we left off. So first off, this Codian rune stone, way too big. We can change that going to modifiers and there's a scale modifier where one is its current default size, two is twice the size, 0 0.5 is half the size. We want to do a rune stone with a size of uh, about a third of its current size, so 0 0.3 we're going to say is the scale for this. Now this will bring the coding rune stone down. Let's just go ahead and test that. And look, uh, the coding rune stone, that's about the right size I want for this coding rune stone. But um, that number is still small. I also want to be to be nice and bold. I want some styling on this number. So there aren't too many styling options, uh, but you do have some styling options with actual text that you uh, write out or create in Project Spark. And how you can access that is through um, some sort of CSS styling script. And here's what that script looks like. Now this is kind of a, um, a little known trick that uh, not too many people know how to do. So this is this might be a new thing that you haven't uh, really experienced. So let's create a new text string here. And let's say we want the size of this text to be 24, uh, a 24 point font, and the style of this text to be bold. Now this is kind of a um, scripting language, a bit of styling scripting that can be applied to the text in order to uh, actually apply some styling on it. You don't have too many options. You can only really um, take the size and style and apply that to the text. So the size can go anywhere from one, which is really tiny font, to uh, all the way to 100, which is really lar really large font. Size 24 is about um, a bit bigger than average font. That's kind of what we want. And then style, you can um, play around with uh, with no style at all. So just uh, having um, just deleting this whole style line and just having size. You can also choose uh, italics, or for our case, we want to choose bold. You want to also make sure that this text is within these kind of caret signs here. This uh, the greater than and less than signs should be on kind of either sides of this. That kind of wraps this code up and packages it so that the text knows what it's getting. And also you'll notice a semicolon after the size and after the style. You need both of those there in order for the uh, in order for Project Spark to understand that both of these statements have been finished. And that's what this semicolon represents. That this statement has been finished. So let's accept that. Let's add a plus sign here. What we're basically doing is we're saying that this size and style is going to be added to the global coin counter. Or we can add it to whatever text we want. But we are adding this to the global coin counter. So all of that together, what does that create? Let's go into test. And oh, look at that. We have much bolder font, 
much more easy to read. That looks just like uh, around what we what we wanted to get. So that'll do it for your intro to UI inside of Project Spark. Go ahead and take this and use it to create your own kind of user interface, however you want. We kept it simple, but you can, of course, go more and more complex. For the purposes of this whole tutorial, we're going to stop UI uh, there, I think. That gives, you, uh, that gives us enough, you know, really to be tracking throughout the playtime of this character. So we'll see you guys soon in the next video.